we all can be happy and successful. And we only have challenges when we created stories to that. If you want to have an amazing life, you, every single one of us, we can have what we want. Every single one of us deserve to have an amazing life. And our heart wants us to know two things. The first thing our heart wants us to know is we're worthy of love. And we need to let go to of any stories that to the opposite. The second thing our heart wants us to know, it wants us to admit our dreams and aspirations. And then it's about organizing our time to give the heart what it wants. So in a nutshell, I to me, this is the path to success. This is how everybody, no matter how hard our childhood was, we all have access to having an amazing life if we want to. Welcome to the Mind Tracks podcast with breakthrough ideas to live your best life possible and how to make it happen. I'm Paul Sheely, and today we'll be talking with Dr. Lise Janelle. Dr. Lise Janelle is a holistic chiropractor and the creator of the Heart Freedom Method, a powerful mind body tool for quickly dissolving self sabotaging beliefs and unlocking one's full potential for success. She founded the Center for Heart Living in Toronto, where she has coached thousands of clients, including athletes, executives, entrepreneurs, and artists, to achieve transformative change from the inside out. Dr. Lees is co-author of Conversations with the Heart and You Are Love. Hello, Dr. Lise. It's so good to be with you. Nice to see you. Welcome to this podcast. Thank you, Paul, for having me. It's great opportunity to connect with you. I really enjoy every time we, you and I connect. It's always fun. It is. It, sometimes it's in a pool, it's on a beach, sometimes it's out in the desert, but every time it's always been really lovely. So thank you so much for being here. You know, we're talking today about your work, conversations with your heart. And there is a lot of important science behind the reason that we say, hey, you want to overcome the limitations of your past, you want to achieve more success. What we have to do is connecting with the heart is key. So would you give us a bit of some background about what is the physical heart? Why is this a seed of so much wisdom, intelligence, and power? Yeah, that's a great question. As you know, there's the Heart Math Institute that studied all the science be behind this and that they have found that the electromagnetic field from the heart is actually the most powerful one. It's more powerful than the brain than the gut one. And that when you are in the heart, you actually create synchronization between your mind and your emotions. And so all my work has been brought into getting people into the heart so they can access inner peace, their genius, their creativity, their truth, a true sense of empowerment. I, I love making people feel safe. And people feel safe and happy when they come from the heart. And my belief from working with thousands of people one-on-one -on -one is that our essence is love. It's who we are. Love is not an emotion. Love is actually our essence. So the only thing we need to do to experience happiness is let go of the emotions that create the thoughts and the thoughts create the emotions and spinning us around and around all the time and bring ourselves back through gratitude into the heart to experience happiness, inspiration, love, and all the beautiful things that we want in life. Well, excellent. So your work as a chiropractor was essentially trying to help people get in alignment that when there's a subluxation or there's a twist or there's a tension somewhere, you want to get them back in alignment. So what was the shift in your work that really brought you to see that it's an energetic field of the heart that seems to make the biggest difference in the success of your clients? Well, when I saw a chiropractor right from the beginning, I saw that 
I could have 10 people with exactly the same condition, like let's say the same low back pain. And I would adjust them all, this, you know, similar ways. Eight of them would get better and two of them, mm, that was not working. So that sent me on a path to discover, like, how can I help my patients get better? So that sent me the path to studying like mind-body work and, and what makes happiness. And I realized very early on that people who are happy don't get sick as often. And if they get sick, they recuperate a lot faster than people who are not. So for me, when you're in the heart, when you experience inner peace and love and gratitude, you create homeostasis that brings on health. So I just, I, I, when I was a, like you say, you, you, you know about chiropractic. When I was a chiropractor, I believe the natural state of a human being is to be healthy and you only have this ease if there was a block to that healing power of the body. And the block can be structural, biochemical, or emotional. As a chiropractor, you work a lot on the structural, but also your know, diet and supplements and things you can have. But I didn't have access to the emotional part. So that's when I ended up studying uh, with Scott Walker, who was a chiropractor and from San Diego. And he created a method called NET, Neuroemotional Technique. And it's really powerful. I love, I love doing it. And at the same time, I discover... Um, John Demartini. And John teaches the power of gratitude. So I ended up from working with thousands of people doing NET and knowing and starting to teach about the power of the heart. I ended up creating a method called the Heart Freedom Method that allows us to find a moment a belief got created in our physiology that's now holding us back from the rest of you know, experiencing an amazing life. Because for me, the natural state of a human being is to be health, to be healthy of the heart, which is to be happy and successful. We all can be happy and successful. And we only have challenges when we created stories to that. And actually, Excellent. It, it's a quote from you that I use all the time. We have the subconscious mind and relatively speaking, the subconscious mind is the football field and I have a conscious mind that I want something, the football. So it's the perfect amount analogy. And people will go, oh, wow. So if you want to have an amazing life, you every single one of us, we can have what we want. Every single one of us deserve to have an amazing life. The only thing we need to do is, I'm going to use my famous yin and yang. Right? <laughs> so... For me, this is a visual for success. If you want to be successful, this is the yin, which is the female principle of listening to the heart. And our heart wants us to know two things. The first thing our heart wants us to know is we're worthy of love. And we need to let go to, of any stories that to the opposite. The second thing our heart wants us to know, it wants us to admit our dreams and aspirations. And then it's about organizing our time to give the heart what it wants. So in a nutshell, I, to me, this is the path to success. This is how everybody, no matter how hard our childhood was, we all have access to having an amazing life if we want to. I love that. I love the visual aid too. So anybody who didn't see that because they're just listening to this podcast on auditory, uh, the, the yin energy is the dark side of the white dark a light dark uh -huh. image and yeah it's it's excellent so this idea that spiritual teachers almost always tell us that if we're going to advance to further levels in our practice we need to open our heart you know my brother lee and he's in tai chi and push hands and energy work and all of that and every time a, a master teacher gets together with him and he asks well how can i get better at this craft at this skill they always say well you have to open your heart and he gets so frustrated he's like, what does that even mean so what would you say to a person like my brother lee who doesn't have a clue when you say well you just have to contact your heart you just have to open your heart what 
is that? I know. That, like, I remember one of my clients, she was a young woman. She came to see me and she was in, you know, in dire strait and she was pretty miserable. And twerking with me, she got a lot better. She was happy. She found happiness. So her father, who was a cardiologist, and him, him and his wife were having problems. She told them, like, go see, go see Lise. And uh, so he comes and he's sitting in front of me. He go, what do you mean, the heart? I mean, I I have to, I have to connect with my muscle, the heart. And he was looking at me like I was crazy. <laughs> so it's like for us, the brain is is what we use to access our thoughts, but our heart is what we we use to access our soul. And the best way to access the heart, there are only four things that live in the heart: love, gratitude, inspiration, and wisdom. Love, gratitude, inspiration, and wisdom. And to give you an interesting story on that, I have a family that came to see me, the mom and the dad, and they're amazing, and their daughter is literally a rock star. And uh, and the son um, has schizophrenia. And um, through working with me and changing diet and all kinds of things, he got better, but he got stuck. And he was hiding always in the basement. He was not doing much with his life. And I'm going, I know that connecting with the heart would help him. And of all four, inspiration, wisdom, love, gratitude, like mm, he doesn't know how to access gratitude, but he knows how to access love. So I asked the parent to sit with him and asking questions like, do you feel like we love you? And go, sure, like, yeah, you love me. I feel that. And they said, do you know what would make us feel like you really, really love us? If you started to do things for us without us having to ask you for it. Well, he took it on. He started, you know, cleaning, grocery shopping for them, doing all kinds of things that this whole world ended up changing. He went up outside in the forest. He liked to do ATV, so he would go ATV, and he even moved out of the house and found his own place and ended up, you know, living by himself just from the power of the heart. But for an average person, this is a pretty extreme case. An average person, I find gratitude is the easiest way. If you start with gratitude, you start to be in contact with your heart, and then you can have inspiration. Because if you don't have gratitude, you can't get inspiration. If you look at the word inspiration, in means with. Asian is a condition of spirit. So to get inspiration, you need to be connected with your higher self. And when you are ungrateful, you don't have access to that part of yourself. So for your brother, for anybody listening right now, when I do the work with my clients, that helps them really get, oh, that's what you mean by connecting with the heart. It start by continuing to the heart through gratitude. And not only yes. the things that feel good, actually look for the things also. If you want to transform your life, I'm going to use for those of you who don't see it, but those of you <laughs> that are, you're really going to get it. But if you look at the yin and the yang again, and the dark side in this case will represent challenged and the light side really represents support i have a corny story and it's the perfect corny story one day the scientist is observing a butterfly coming out of a cocoon it's a huge struggle it takes hours and hours and hours so to be nice to the butterfly cuts the cocoon open so what happens when the butterfly cannot struggle the wings are weak it can never fly and it dies like that so if you can look at Everything that's ever happened in your life, whether it's support, whoops, whether it's support, the light side, or whether it's challenge, the dark side, it's actually everything is happening for you. So instead of looking at things happening to you, start asking yourself, since my soul wants the best for me, why is this happening? How is this guiding me? Again, when, when people face a challenge, I find there's only two reasons people face challenges. One, it's because they need to master something. Because obviously, if they had mastered it, it wouldn't be a challenge. Number two, it's sending you in a direction that you need to go. That you are either aware you need to go, but you're kicking and screaming, you're not doing it. Like, you know, you need to change your job because ugh, it's killing your, your heart there. Like, oh, it doesn't feel good, but you're staying there. So all of a sudden, you get into a car accident or something, and now you can't go to work. 
Or sometimes it's sending you in a direction that you're not aware. And this is when you need faith. This is when you really need faith that since I'm worthy of love, what's happening right now through this challenge, I'm being asked to do something that's going to be good for my higher self. Like for me in 1988, my father was diagnosed with terminal cancer and he was given nine months to live. That was three weeks before my sister's wedding. One week after the wedding, my 21-year-old brother died in a car accident. And then within a month of that, my eight-year relationship to the man I thought I was going to marry. And and it was like, ow, ow, ow. It was so painful. But out of this pain, it sent me on a quest to understand how to live life. How to live life when these things happen? Because it's not if these things will happen is when they happen how do you use it so you don't die from pain and sorrow and the only way you're going to be able to do this is if you start asking what is this asking me to master and i'm sitting with you right now speaking with you paul because of that event in 1988 to survive the pain i went on a quest on this and how to live a great life Nice. What does it take to live a great life? And what it takes to live a great life is first to know you're worthy of love. Second, that when something happens, it's not happening to you, it's happening for you. And then you need to become a really good detective. <laughs> you need yeah. to start looking at and all the different areas of my life, spiritually, socially, physically, career-wise, financially, my environment, like my health. How is this? Right now, this challenge that's happening, how is this getting me to grow and follow my heart? You know, you heard the old saying, beware what you ask for because you might well get it. I believe if you have a deep, deep desire within your heart to make something happen, you will, you will attract challenges to help you do what we just talked about and support. And people have a challenge often because when it feels so good, we tend to want to stay there. And staying in in our comfort zone is just as dangerous as ended up feeling sorry for ourselves because of the challenges that we have in our life. So when you have a deep desire, make sure it's the right one you want, and then move forward and watch what the world brings to you. It's going to bring you support and challenge, but both are really the same thing. Both are really support. Well, it's gorgeous. You know, they have often, we've often heard the ideas follow your heart's wish or your heart's dream. And many teachers of mine have said the true power and potential that's within us is always residing just behind the thing we fear most. And the way to get to it is with courage to be filled with heart. So there's so many understandings and metaphors throughout our culture and throughout spiritual traditions that suggest this. It seems spot on and the techniques that you teach will absolutely reveal it to us. Now, our friend Chen Yi Lin talks about the center of the heart as being the place where the spirit resides. And in many of the traditions of Himalayan yoga meditation, they talk about as if you were sitting in the cave of your heart, meditating from that place. And that's where the heart math, heart lock technique comes through and and all of that. But there is a, another thing that he said that Chen Yi Lin said is that the soul is in a place in the center of the brain and that's connected to our divine nature. And our job is to connect the spirit that is our human experience, living our spiritual existence as a human being, to connect with that soul essence that's also within our brain. So do you make a distinction like that? Do you talk about a difference between soul and spirit? Or for you, are those two the same thing? For me, the the two are the same. As human beings, we can live through our mind, our cerebral soul, our God, our emotional center, and then our heart, which is our spiritual center. And I find when you come from the heart, 
when you come from the heart, it aligns everything. And for me, it doesn't come, it came from the most powerful spiritual experience of my life. This is not something I read in the book. This is something I've experienced. Is when the first time I did the Demartini method with John Demartini, I was doing the work and I was feeling my heart opening. I had, I had been really, really angry with my father, really, really angry. Like he had been tough, that's for sure. So I was angry and resentful. And then I'm doing this exercise. And as I'm seeing the, you know, the pros and the cons, the truth of having had my father, my heart started opening up. And I started to see the beauty of having had my father and how he had been providing the support and challenges that I had in my life that were necessary. And then I'm watching this man who's reminding me of my father. And then he breaks down and he says, mommy, why is it you didn't love me? And my heart went kaboom. And it's like, oh, that's the story of my father. And my heart opened so wide that I ended up in this altered space that felt like a near-death experience. Like when I read people who had an, an, a near-death experience and I compare it to what I experienced, it was like, whoa, I was in another dimension. And I was shown without words, telepathically, that everything that ever happened to us Everything that is happening, everything that will ever happen is there for us to grow in love and wisdom. And it was like, whoa, and I was in tears. Like it, it felt amazing. Like it lasted maybe 30 seconds and then I came back down <sighs> into reality. <laughs> and that experience was so powerful. That's why I do what I do actually, because I love being a chiropractor. I was really good. My patient loved me. It was amazing lifestyle. But the truth of is it healed my heart and I wanted to help heal the hearts of millions of people. It's like we were talking about beware what you're asking and I get it. So in 1989, I wrote down mission statement for my life and my career part, part says I'm going to help heal the hearts of millions of people through maximizing their life potential. Mm, nice. And uh, so I can tell you from experience that if you're in an extreme, extreme state of gratitude, you're actually in a state of grace. And that's how yeah, you experience gratitude, understanding, love, acceptance. They're all wrapped up in that story. It's so powerful. Yeah, a, a, an extreme state of gratitude gives you to a state of grace. And that's how you experience heaven on earth. Our friend Martin Root, you know, creating heaven on earth and all that. I'm all for creating uh, heaven on earth because we can be fully integrated here in the human experience, experiencing support and challenges, but being in awe of it and using it to create beautiful life for ourselves and others and say thank you to God for this experience that we have. Awesome. So I am remembering the work of. Uh teacher of mine, Dr. Dr. Asen, and he talks about the physical heart as being a fleshiness. There is a physical heart, and then there is the essence of the heart. And when we go through early life traumas, the essence of the heart withdraws from the fleshiness of the heart as a protection mechanism. So the reason that we're, our hearts are closed off, as we might say, or the reason we might not be living as fully as we could is generally out of a protection from feeling that we might be a victim again in the future. So the heart freedom technique that you teach, is this a way that you could show us how to reconnect with that essence in that fleshiness and live courageously, live wholeheartedly, live more gratefully with gratitude, love, and inspiration. Yes, that's exactly why I ended up creating the heart freedom and exactly, exactly. For, and I love that, you know, the word courage has the French word cow, which is French for heart. So you, you know that. Mm -hmm. And that when people ask me, do you think I can have what I want? Like they come to see me for coaching and I say, as long as you're driven and you really, really want it and you have courage, I'm sure you can get it. So, yeah, the through the heart freedom, this is something I want to explain because 
what I've seen, and, and that really helps people, is like, if I put you in a heart freedom meditation, I'm going to help you feeling just connected in your heart. You're going to feel really good. You're going to feel at one with your heart. And you feel like when you're in your heart, you feel nothing is missing. You actually feel beautiful, abundant, safe, like, you have no desire the buddhist principle of having no desire is just that what happened when you're in in your heart but could you imagine if all of us remember that our essence is that we're all little you know, billions of little buddhas under the buddha trees having no desire that wouldn't work so well so what happened is when we are born into the physical world right from the get-go love has to come from the outside because if love doesn't come from the outside you die so now we're being play the cosmic trick on us and as part of the initiation we all have to go through that so as little kids if you cry and mommy comes i'm king i'm queen of the world i'm amazing but if you cry and mommy doesn't come what's wrong with me so now you created one of those stories and you and I probably, when we were born, we were put far away from mom. You were on a feeding schedule and you could cry and cry and cry and cry and cry ah, 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 and nobody comes. So now you created two stories. Again, I'm not worthy of love because if I were, my mom would come. The second one is it hurts too much to ask for what I want and not get it. So I'm going to stop asking for what I want. So if you remember the, you know, the success principle, the yin is listening to your heart and knowing that you're worthy of love. The second thing is to admit your dreams and aspirations. So now right from the get go, we have closed down the heart. We have forgotten our divine essence of who we are. And then mom has the audacity to have another baby. What's wrong with me? She's nursing the baby. She's cranky with me. She doesn't know. It's like, and we create these stories over and over and over again. You know, and now you're 15 years old and you have your first crush. And oh my goodness. Now we, we confuse infatuation with love. And it's like, as high as we go, it's like, oh my goodness, someone finally sees how amazing I am. And then they dump you. Now you're depressed. Now you're really afraid of love. When love is the safest thing in the world. So we, I believe that stage one is necessary to all of us. There are two stages. As far as I can see, stage one is the unconscious, the sleep and fantile stage. And then you have stage two, which is the conscious, mature and uh, awakened stage. Everybody goes through stage one, which I call the boot camp or hell on earth. <laughs> Some of us were lucky enough to wake up to the power of the heart and start creating heaven on earth. And the power comes from when you understand that, no, and I have another analogy. Stop me if I'm speaking too much. Like I have three um, different boot camps that I created. Some people were born into a, what I call a musical boot camp. They didn't have many challenges. It was pretty easy at home. So their wings are not so strong. So when things happen to them, they can't handle life so much. Some of us were born into an athletic boot camp. It's challenged and supported, you know, you, you can face life, you know. You still create stories, but it's not as strong as Navy SEAL boot camp. With the Navy SEAL boot camp where you have to go through hell week and you survive, <laughs> and you can graduate as a superhero. And what happens is a lot of us feel like we're graduating from the Navy SEAL. And the problem from that graduating from the Navy SEAL is it's, what's wrong with me for having had such a, a hard life? And if you are wise, you're going to go instead, like I was destined to have really strong wings. So I'm going to start looking at everything that's ever happened to me from that place of wonder. Since I'm worthy of love, why was I supposed to have such a challenging situation? And you will see the talents that you have, the interests that you have, the people that you love in your life. They all came from that boot camp you were born into. And now the key is to start using everything that's ever happened from your boot camp. Because if you go to a boot camp, is it because something is wrong with you that you went to a musical boot camp or an athletic boot camp or a Navy SEAL? No, nothing is wrong with you. It has nothing to do with anything you being wrong. Okay. You just go there to learn things. So now what we do is we start going into stage two where we start creating our life from our heart, from inspiration, from gratitude, from everything that we've discovered in us.
And there is a deeper wisdom that guides that process. Once you recognize, hey, I'm in phase two, or I desire to be in phase two, it's as if that higher intelligence and wisdom keeps setting the right teacher, the right book, the right podcast to listen to, to help us recognize, embody the real strengths that our life has given us as we go. Now, I'm, I would like to take just a couple of minutes to, as we're getting close to finishing up, you have a um, heart freedom method meditation. Would you be willing to guide us yeah, on that? Yeah, do the meditation with you for sure. So Excellent. What I'd like you to do right now, if you're, if you're driving, don't close your eyes, but otherwise, <laughs> close your eyes and imagine taking in a deep breath in for three through your nose, through your heart. And now, and as you keep breathing in through your nose, through your heart, you might say a little hello to your heart and thank your heart for being for you every moment of your day. And we can thank our respiratory system, our musculoskeletal system, digestive system, nervous system, all the systems in our body because they work most of the time amazingly well. So let's take a moment right now just to say thank you for our body, for this amazing body of ours for working so well. And now let's go into a little trip around the universe. Let's send love and gratitude to our family of origin, our family that supported and challenged us and allowed us to become who we are today. So our parents, siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, sending them many blessings. Now let's send love and gratitude to our family of the present, plus or minus some people. Thank you for making our life richer and with all the experiences that you bring that allows us to grow in love and wisdom. Now let's send love and gratitude to our inner circle of friends, the people we often feel like they're family. Keep breathing through your nose, through your heart. And to your outer circle of friends, the people we don't think about, but they have an impact in our lives. Thank the neighbors, our colleagues, students, teachers, cashier at a grocery store. Send them blessings. Now let's send love and gratitude to humankind, all of us on planet Earth, we're all seeking the same thing deep down. We're all seeking for happiness, but we know it comes from loving. So thank you, brothers and sisters, for being on the path with us. Some of you being ahead of us, some of you being, we're pulling along the path of love and wisdom. Now let's send love and gratitude through the animal kingdom, especially our pets who feel like family. And also the animals that give up their, uh, their lives for our sustenance. Thank you for your sacrifice and a special intention that you be treated with care and gratitude. And all the amazing animals around the planet the raccoons, the squirrels, the chipmunks, the whales, the elephants, the lions, especially the birds and their beautiful songs. Keep breathing through your nose, through your heart. Let's send love and gratitude to nature, the rivers, the lakes, the oceans. Breathe it in through your nose, through your heart, through the mountains, the blue sky, the clouds, the rain, the snow, through the forests, breathe it in, feel it into your heart. For all the fruits and vegetables, the berries, the nuts, the cereals for our sustenance, the flowers, for the sound of the wind and the leaves of a tree, breathe it in through your nose, through your heart. 
let's send love and gratitude to Mother Earth, Pachamama, allowing us, spiritual being, to have a trip on planet Earth. And to our ancestors and the generations to come, to the universe, the matrix of love, to God, feel your heart, fill it up with all that love and gratitude, and now become ready to receive love as much as you were sending out, be ready to receive it back. So feel the love from God. The universe, put it in. From the generations to come in our ancestors, put it in, in your nose, in your heart. Feel your heart as a golden globe, filling up with this beautiful golden light energy. From Mother Earth and nature, from humankind and the animal kingdom, feel their love coming back at you. From humankind and your outer circle of friends, your inner circle of friends, your family of the present and of the past, feel all their love coming back at you, breathe it in. And now, and right now, if you are really in gratitude, you can feel what we we're speaking about. You can feel your essence, who you really are. You are love. You are safe right now. You feel beautiful, abundant, safe. You have inner peace. You have access to this anytime you want. Nothing has changed right now in the outside world except the connection to your heart. And if you want, you can have access to this every day of your life. When you feel ready, take another breath in through your nose, through your heart, and allow the beautiful golden light of your heart to send a healing energy to all the cells of your body. We'll say thank you, scintillating, beautiful golden light, healing you, and healing people get in contact around you, sensing that beautiful healing energy. Breathe it in again. And now, that's it. When you feel ready, you can open your eyes. Oh, beautiful. So nice. You know, it seems to me, Lisa, that we're always going to be more effective at any project we start, any meeting we go into, any day we begin if we start at that place. Now, would you say that once we really get that process of connecting with love and gratefulness, gratitude for all of what life means to us, that we can simply meditate on that place of the heart, like that golden sphere of energy that you suggested there? Could we just start as we put our feet on the floor? We could just start breathing from that place, feeling that gratefulness, that gratitude for all things, and that that would be the starting place? Yeah, that can be a really good starting place. When we're experiencing challenges, it gets harder because you're standing there and as a part of you, like we all are trying to like, why is this happening? And then from that place, go like if you can be barefoot on the ground, as you know, barefoot on the wet beach, it's even better. Or barefoot on wet grass in the morning. And if you can stand there and from a place of gratitude, just stand there and know that everything that's happening right now, it's happening for you. And be open to all the possibilities of everything that's going and just yeah, meditate from that beautiful place of knowing you are love. This is who you are. And you're living in a magical universe. Well, I remember your teacher, Dr. John Demartini, talking about how he would start his day, that he would not move from that spot on the floor upon placing his feet there, 
until he was so filled with gratitude that tears would flow from his eyes. And I think, wow, that is, <laughs> that's really embodying that immense joy and power that we are in this life. So as a final thought, and thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom with us as a, and people will be able to find out more about your work with the links that we provide as a, a final message, because it is a part of your mission. What would you wish for all of us to do or be on a daily basis to make the most of the wisdom of the heart? If you can master that, Every time you ex experience a challenge, what you do is you take a deep breath and you go, since I'm worthy of love, how is this helping me become more of who I am? So that's, mm. that's a big, big one. And the other thing is spend time uh, discovering what's my purpose in life. And I can tell you, I can give you some cheat sheets. Your, your, your mission on planet Earth is to bring the best out of you. You have special talents and things that come from your boot camp. Take the time to acknowledge who you are, your talents, and bring them into the world so that when you see the support and challenge, you will benefit from it. But I, as a human being, will benefit from it. All of our brothers and sisters benefit. And it's our best way of saying thank you to God for this beautiful experience that we have on planet Earth. And bring the full measure of our contribution to humanity at this important time that we're facing, right? I really feel that right now we are at the verge of a great awakening. I think beautiful things mm -hmm. from the, through the challenges that we've experienced is an expansion that's happening that's going to bring more heaven on earth. Indeed. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Lise Janelle. Thank you so much. I guess I need the kiss on both cheeks, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Lise Janelle. You can learn more about Dr. Lise at drleesjanelle.com that's d-r-l-i-s-e j-a-n-e-l-l-e dot com and now in the second part of the podcast it's just you and me I'll tell you how to use the paraliminal sessions in the Mind Tracks app to easily handle obstacles and move toward the success you want especially as it relates to Dr. Lee's message. If you're new to the relaxing paraliminal audio sessions, they use breakthrough technologies to activate your whole mind in only 20 minutes to help improve any area of your life. Let's get going. Hello and welcome to my follow-on to the conversation I had with Dr. Lise Janelle. Her work in conversations with the heart. Powerful ideas of how to do healing, how to live to our fullest potential, and how to really awaken to our purpose for being here and our great contribution to the world. When I think about the conversation, I could break it down into a number of key areas and the paraliminals that can assist you in becoming strong in each of those areas. So the five areas I came up with are communicating with your inner self, opening the heart, big part of our conversation, aligning with your life's purpose, your greater mission or purpose in life living to your fullest potential, and finally creating heaven on earth. And uh, that, that's a very cool idea, but it really does mean that we're living and recognizing that everything in the world really is supporting us, showing up and delivering our great work to the world, living 
to our full potential. So let's start in this idea with communicating with your inner self. I believe that all of paraliminal technology is rooted in this fundamental idea that there is this greater power and potential, all the resources you need that exist within us. And what's essential is that we establish a clear conversation, a clear connection with those inner resources or that resourcefulness of creativity, genius, inspiration, love, gratefulness, all that we are. That's paraliminal technology, and it's a way that assists us in letting go of the limitations that we have been focusing on, the stories that we're repeating to ourselves. And the paraliminal that really connects us with that is called self-love, where we can recognize our past self, we can recognize the future self, and our present self and we establish a communication with all three so there is a healing that take place with the past it's a recognition that everything up until now has served you in getting here there's a connection to our fuller potential that is the future and our future self coming and consoling us that yes you can do this this is the way forward to get to that great expression of your genius your power and your potential tremendous paraliminal experience the second area that lee's and i talked about is this idea of opening the heart seems to be a key idea in spiritual traditions as well as a lot of human development work and there are two paraliminals that are very much focused on this. The first one, gratitude. And Dr. Lisa was really set on the practice of gratefulness, the practice of gratitude as being the way that ultimately does, in fact, open the heart. Plus the fact that an open heart allows us to courageously step into the world and live passionately for the dreams what we're inspired to do the paraliminal for that is joy which focuses on the energy of the heart being joy and passion and how we can bring that joy and passion for what it is we're here to do every single day that's the joy paraliminal the third idea was the idea of aligning with our life's purpose. And while our purpose is actually written on our heart and our mind as we're born into this world, by the way, on the heart first, that's what develops first in the uh, embryo. And then the brain starts to take most of the energy. And when we come into the world, yeah, it's all about focusing on the brain, not so much on the heart. So as we come into this second phase of our lives, this awakening, it really is awakening to that power of the heart that's within us. And so the tech, the paraliminals and the techniques that will assist us in aligning with our life's purpose, number one, finding yourself. It's a very cool paraliminal that starts now and looks at the three major stages of your life that you went through all the way back to conception when you as a spiritual being came into this human form to be born into the world. What was the purpose that you came here for? And so it connects you to that amazing trajectory of your life so that you know that right now, starting today and for all days forward, you can live a life of meaning and purpose. And grounding yourself in that, very helpful when you've done paraliminals, a great way to start the day, great way to finish the day, right? And the other paraliminal that could help in this area is the self-actualizations paraliminal. And self-actualization is 
the rising in the hierarchy of needs to recognize that we do have a need to have high self-esteem and actualize, live as a fully actualized person. The fact that you're here and we're in dialogue around this, that's a very important recognition that you are self-actualized. And what is the energy that's pushing us through self-actualization to that next step is self-transcendence, that we're actually transcending the earthly needs that we have had in the first phase of our life and coming to a real delivery of what we're here to bring in the second phase of our lives. So self-actualization puts you very much in touch with that. The fourth area is living to your fullest potential. And in this, I recommend that fearlessness, which also mean which also means living courageously, the heart core as in French and courage meaning filled with heart to live wholeheartedly each day is to live without fear, to step into whatever it is that inspires us to be able to leave our fears and our pains behind in favor of those were strength building activities to bring me to my fuller expression. Fearlessness, paraliminal. The other one in this area would be the prosperity paraliminal, which you hear me talk about all the time. It's such a, a central one in the library of paraliminals and prosperity lets us recognize we do have all that we need to live to our fullest potential. And if there's any thought that you need more time or you need more positive relations and support, if you need more finance, if you need whatever it is you need, the prosperity paraliminal will help you recognize that you have it. You have it in a, an abundant measure and can tap into those resources. And the fifth and final area of the dialogue with Dr. Lees was this area of creating heaven on earth. And she used it as a bit of a subtext that our friend Martin Root has written about this and has been teaching it. But it really is the idea that we all know what we would define as heaven on earth for us. And when we do, then we can begin to attract the realization of it. We can attract all that's necessary to bring it into being. And in that, I would say the paraliminal living, the law of attraction would be the number one, that you are attracting to you whatever it is you need to live a fully awakened, fully embodied, purpose-driven life full of resourcefulness, gratefulness, and love, bringing your very best to every single day. And in that, the final paraliminal I would recommend is euphoria which is our natural state, just as love, joy, peace, all of these are our natural state. And when we're living full out, when we are truly living heaven on earth every single day, including those days that it seems like it's not heaven on earth, but it's there to help reinforce and bring our attention to what matters most, then euphoria really is an excellent paraliminal to help you recognize and embody this higher frequency of energy that is your spirit living full out every single day. Great to be with you. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining me today. I applaud your willingness to maximize your potential. You can easily use the Paraliminal Audio Sessions in the MindTracks app to stimulate your non-conscious mind, that is your inner mind, to reduce any resistance in your life, and to propel you toward the success you want. 
go to www.mindtracks.com slash go. That's www.mindtrx.com slash go. These amazing audio tools have helped millions, and I encourage you to bring them into your world today. Be sure to be back for more episodes of the Mind Tracks podcast. You'll find insightful conversations with authors, experts, and thought leaders, all devoted to improving your life's experience. Thank you again for being here on our Mind Tracks podcast.